Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and we're doing the Silo Art Trail today. Now, some of you haven't been able to travel. We were also in the same boat here in Victoria, Australia. Um, our, we were in lockdown for a long time. And so a few weeks ago, well, two weekends ago, we went on an adventure and this is our story that we're going to share with you some great pics of artwork uh, that actually mean something and reflect the community in which it's in. Uh, artwork with a story which is always uh, more interesting and so I am going to share these uh, photos with you and I hope that you enjoy that. Now if you like information that is valid, real and helpful then you're in the right place and you need to subscribe below. And that means that when I release another clip, you actually are aware and you can watch that. Why not? The Silo Art Trail is Australia's biggest outdoor gallery and covers 200 kilometers of area within the Wimmera Mallee region. So it is portraits on large grain silos which date back to the 1930s and these reflect the lives and the stories of the area and it's ingrained on the grain silos. How good is that? So this project began um, initially I think in 2016 where it saw some renowned artists from Australia and across the globe uh, meet and transform each grain silo into a work of art, each one telling a unique story. So in 2016, that was when the first grain silo started, uh, artwork was completed, and what started out as a small community project, and this is how small ideas can become big ideas. You know, uh, the group uh, got together, they had minimal funding, and they, put some artwork that reflected the region on the grain silo. Well, then they realized that everybody, well, it was a bit of an attraction. You know, people were coming to visit it. It was bringing people into the area. It was bringing interest. It was bringing money, cha-ching, cha-ching, which, of course, these regional areas are in need of. So it was soon decided that um, with the help of the Australian government and Grain Corp that they would actually make uh, some of the grain silos in the area uh, platforms of, for artwork. And so this is how the silo art trail began. We live in the west of Melbourne and so we set off just planning to visit maybe one silo. So. From where we live, we drove to Ararat initially, and here's some pictures of Ararat. We actually lived in Ararat for probably about nine months, um, many, many years ago, and it was nice to visit, and we had a look around, and here are some pictures of the gardens, and there are, there's an old um, jail there, and they actually also used it as a, like a mental asylum as well. So. We don't use those words as such, but that's what it was known as in Ararat. And um, they now do tours through it, of course, and it costs about $17 an adult and, and, and takes about one and a half hours. We didn't go for the tour, but we did take some pictures around the area because it's an old bluestone jail and it just looks nice and with nice greenery around. From Ararat, we went on to Stall, and Stall is a small town famous for the Stall Gift, which is a professional foot race and dates back to 1878. Uh, it borders the Grampians, which are great like um, rock and formations in the area, and you know lots of rock climbers, bushwalkers, you know, gather there to spend their weekends. Uh, and you know just sightsee and all those sort, sorts of things and there's some really nice old homes in the area as well and here's a picture of a fire station that we passed and I thought was a good photo opportunity. From Storm, we arrived at the first silo at Rapenyup 
And we thought, wow, this is pretty good. Yeah, there was um, this, this particular silo uh, reflects the sportsmanship in, in, in the area and actually represents the town's youth and their great love of team sports. So you can see there's a girl dressed in a netball uniform and a guy, a young lad, is in his Australian Rural Sports jersey. Uh, this silo was completed in 2017 and the artist is Julia Volkova and yeah so she she did the artwork on on this particular silo and we also while we were there picked up some leaflets now this is probably the reason why we got caught up in the whole silo art trail you know we were planning to see one and then we picked up this information leaflet at, at the very site, like, because it's sort of like the beginning of the art trail. And we had a look through it and we thought, wow, there's a whole lot of green silos here. Oh, wouldn't that be nice to go and see? Maybe we can, oh, the next place is a colourful grain silo. And I'm reading it and I'm thinking, yep, let's go and see that. And so then we thought, oh, we'll go and see the second silo because it's got colour on it. And, you know, it's just a bit different from the black and white one at Repenya. And that was the beginning of our big day driving. So um, we also picked up some other brochures at the same time. And they just tell a little bit about what you can see in the area. There's also uh, a, little, a great little place to go at Mertoa, uh, but we, did, we didn't have time to stop and have a look at that. We travelled on to Sheep Hills, which is the second silo, and the artist is a Melbourne-based artist, Adne, and he tells the story of Indigenous people and their native lands. The night sky represents elements of the local dream, dreaming and dream time, and overall image signifies the important exchange of wisdom, knowledge and customs from elders to the next generation. So you can see it's colourful, you know, it's got lots to look at and, and yeah, we were impressed by this silo um, art and we stood there and watched a while. The flies were so bad, I must say, if you're heading out to do the circuit, do take lots of um, water and snacks, hats, uh, fly repellent and yeah, because you sort of do need to be prepared for so that you can enjoy the day. The next stop were the grain silos at Brim and these were completed in 2016 and these were the first silos. Remember I was talking to you before about a small community project that started well, these are the silos, that the first ones that actually, you know, caught everybody's imagination to actually make, um, you know, this silo art a bit of a thing. So, yes, so this is the first one um, that was ever done and depicts multi-generational quartet of both male and female farmers showing strength and the resilience of the local farming community. Then we went on to Rosebury and these silos are painted or have been painted by Melbourne artist Caffeine. Now I thought to myself, what a great name for an artist. Does that mean you drink lots of caffeine? I don't know. Anyway, it actually has a hyphen in it. I don't know. Anyway, this was completed in 2017 and it, it, it depicts photos that embody the regions of the past, present and future. It shows the grit, tenacity of female farmers in the area. Um, you know, she's in her, uh, working in the Mallee, she's in her shirt, her jeans and her cowboy boots. Um, and it symbolises the strength of the future. And the silo on the right reflects a quiet moment with men uh, and between friends, which is, you know, um, man and his horse or you know the the relationship one can have with animals especially you know they're working animals you rely a lot on them when you're out working 
your farm or working a farm. Now there is another silo uh, called Patchy Wallach. We decided that we would omit that one because it was, I worked out on Google Maps that it was like a 40 minute drive off the trail and back to it. So we were already pushed for time because of course we didn't plan to do the whole thing. I'm inserting a photo here of the actual grain silo it was it's a beautiful silo we did bump into other people who were doing the same trip and they said it was looked great so maybe on another time when we're passing up that way we can actually go and see it as well the next stop was Lascelles. the artist Roan used a monochrome palette that depicts a local farming couple and you can see the woman here he wanted to portray his subjects as wise and knowing and uh, you know it's impressive because he's actually captured the wrinkles in in the face as well uh, yeah and it's right beside a train line and depending which aspect you got we actually weren't in the normal viewing area we we're on the up on the side of a train line so we thought we'd get a, a different view then it was on to Sea Lake. Sea Lake silos are a celebration of the silence and stillness found in the outback of Australia, in Victoria, and the associated feelings of wholeness and freedom. The artwork depicts a young girl swinging from a Mali eucalyptus and she's looking over Lake Tyrrell and reflects on her indigenous heritage. This artwork is by Drapel and the Zookeeper and it takes a bit to get all the silos in the photo because there's a number of them which provide the whole photo. So, you know, each little silo or the smaller ones are actually very good too. And then you've got the large ones. So to actually incorporate them into one photo was a bit tricky, but here are some of the photos that we managed to get. Um, and yeah, it was really lovely just to stand there and take it all in and look at it and the detail and, you know, the emus and yeah, it was great. So the next and the final one was at Nullawill. Now this is an Australian street artist called Smug and he's captured on these grain silos the farmer in the typical flannelette shirt, a blue flannelette shirt with open neckline, a bit of chest hair showing there, and a black and tan kelpie dog, which are sheep dogs and great for working farms. Um, you can see the tan kelpie with his nose. His nose actually looks like it's 3D. It sticks out from the silo depending on which angle, but actually looks like a wet healthy dog nose and in 3D. It's, it's really quite amazing. As a nod to history, the dog's collar has a tag on it that has a galah and a stick engraved in as Nullawill is a derived word from the Aboriginal words meaning nulla, which is a killing stick, and will derived from the Wilcock meaning galah. So this was completed in 2019 and was the last of the Sino Art Trail. And the emphasis was on the Kelpie and the highlights the importance of working dogs to the farming communities. I hope you enjoyed our little adventure out. Um, we could have probably traveled to Sydney the amount of time and the amount of kilometers that we did. I think we actually drove about 900 kilometers that day. So it was a big day. We were pretty exhausted that day. We did manage to have a really good sleep that night. So if you like adventure, if you love health information and just lifestyle tips, then you need to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.